Hello, we've been talking about the abstract installation art of Yayoi Kusama. One thing she's known for is creating these entire spaces where you are overwhelmed by your senses. Using repetition, it gives you time and space to think about something, the abundance of something, how it feels. These are some other artists that use installation, meaning they fill a whole room in a special way, and they use lots of repetition to give the viewer a sense, things to think about and things to talk about. They aren't giving you direct clues about what they are doing, but instead the viewer gets to decide. I start my installation project by choosing a material. I have an abundance of straws here and I'm thinking about just what would look cool. I'm doing some brainstorming. How could I arrange them inside of a small room to kind of give a sense of something else? I thought about putting them across, connecting the two walls, left and right, coming towards you. Can you climb them? Can you step on them if you were little? I thought about piling them up, kind of like a beaver dam or just a big mess, like someone had a whole bunch of candy and it fell down. I even thought about arranging them so I look through the ends, down to the end of the tunnel, and maybe the light is glowing through towards me. All of those are great ideas. Um, but I decide to go with a vertical approach, which you'll see in a bit. So here's the room I get to fill. It is tiny, but that means that I have complete control over this room and I can finish it in school. So familiarize yourself with your box. Fold it down, see how it's really going to come together. Even though we're going to work on it flat, you should really know how it's going to look when it's put together. On one end, I'm doing a horizontal little peeping hole and... That means I'll trace and I will cut it out with a cardboard knife. This is a very slow process because I want this hole to look really clean and open. I want it to invite the viewer to peek through. If it's um, super jagged, it might look like I don't care about my artwork. So I'm using a sawing motion here with my canary knife or my cardboard knife and taking my time until I get it all out. So that's what the hole will look like on one end of your box. And I'm pointing out the tab right there that's holding the box together. I can use my knife flat with the cardboard flat and like an envelope opener to keep the tab attached so I can re-glue it, but to open my box wide and be able to make the inside look the way I want. Now, because I want the inside to be solidly colored, I'm using paint and a flat brush to paint a nice thin even coat. And this I'm even doing a really special treatment where I want to add the same stripes that the straws have. So I used a tape and then removed it when I was done. I use glue, look right there, to re-glue the corner and press and hold. I can do that all flat as well. Just put glue on the tab and press and hold. Now I'm going to get my components ready for the inside. If my straws are six inches, then they should fit my six by six by 11 box. Now, I chose to make them upright like a candy forest or barber poles, and they might remind other people of even more things, which I like. I want them to look inside themselves about what they are into or what, what worries them. And I just wanna see how my box develops. What feelings does it give the viewer? So now that my box is, the bottom is glued, I can lower my panel that is six by 11 down into the bottom. That's why I'm gonna have a bunch of six by 11 panels available for everyone to use, to um, adhere things and then put inside your box. Now comes a mirror. I want every box to have a mirror. It increases the abundance. You can have a mirror in the end. You can have a mirror in the bottom or the sides. There's a couple different sizes of mirror and every box will have lighting so we can see what's going on inside. I delicately unravel the wire or it'll become a huge knot. So make sure that whatever way you're gonna pull the wire open, it's gonna pull open loosely and not become a big tangle that takes your time. I'm gonna use a little piece of Gorilla two-sided tape on the side of my box, and I'm going to glue the control panel with the plain side down right there so that the wire can go in that front corner. The viewer should be able to control the switch. And let's look inside and see what it looks like. 